Hello, I want to talk to you today about sowing seeds. I'm not a gardener. My wife is. But that's not what I want to talk to you about. Because the Bible uses the picture of sowing seeds like a farmer. And that's, that's actually what I want to talk to you about today. Matthew chapter 13 is one of the parables that Jesus gave. It's also repeated in a couple other, other places. Uh, Mark chapter 4 and Luke chapter 8. And it's a very familiar text. In fact, I'm not going to go through it and read it verse for verse. But I want to share some thoughts that I shared briefly uh, during our prayer time on, online the other night. And I want to talk about the idea of sowing seeds because the, Jesus used that to describe when we minister the word, when we preach the word, when we share scriptures, that the effect of God's word is just like planting seeds. In fact, Paul used that exact picture in 1 Corinthians when he said, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And he wasn't talking about agriculture. He wasn't a gardener. He wasn't talking about being a farmer. He was talking about ministering the word. Every time he preached, whenever um, Apollos would minister the word, whether sharing our testimonies, preaching, witnessing, even if you get to share one verse with someone, you are spreading seed. And the encouragement I find from this text in Matthew 13, it's called the parable of the sower and the seed, or some call it the parable of the sower and the soil. Some just call it the power of the so, uh, the parable of the soil, soil, and that's really what it's all about. It's all about the soil of someone's heart, because Jesus uses that picture, that parable. It's an illustration to communicate what happens every time you and I open our Bibles, every time we try to witness, every time we share Scripture, every time we preach or teach the Bible. Uh, there's going to be different responses. And it's such a blessing to know ahead of time what's going to happen when you and I minister. And sure enough, down through the ages, every preacher, every evangelist, uh, every Bible teacher, everyone that has opened the Word of God to anyone, whether one-on-one -on -one counseling or, or preaching th to thousands, you're going to get one of these responses that Jesus talked about. And there is actually four responses, very similar. The picture is so clear of, of a sower, someone that goes out with seeds and just it, it scatters seeds randomly, as it were. And the first example, he says, is some seeds fall by the wayside. And the wayside is literally the, the road, the path. Uh, it's, the, it's the hardened uh, you know, whether it's a rock road, stone road, Rome was very famous for their roads, which were what we would call paved today. Uh, and that would be the wayside. When, when, when you're sowing seeds, when you're ministering the word, there's going to be some people uh, that are going to have the same effect as if you were planting seeds right in the middle of the highway. And I'm not talking about the medium, medial strip either. It's not going to, it's not going to do anything. In fact, the, it's, it, the birds are going to come and take the seed. And in Matthew 13, Jesus explained later to his disciples that there's going to be people, when you and I preach, that are going to be just like that. It's going to be like taking seed and just putting it on a road, a, a, you know, a, a, a hard rock pavement. Nothing's going to happen. So realize this. When you preach or you teach or you share your testimony and you present the scriptures as powerful as the Word of God is, depending on the heart, there are going to be some hearts that are so hardened that your preaching is going to be in vain. In fact, Paul mentioned, or the writer of Hebrews mentioned that when he said the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. So right away, we learn that not everybody's going to benefit from the Word of God. Some people are going to mock it. Some people are going to reject it. Some people are going to despise it. 
Jesus said that's what's going to happen ahead of time. The second ground is the stony ground. And that, Jesus says, uh, falls and there's not much dirt, not much earth. And so, you know, it might start to take root a little bit, but because it's stony ground, it's the, the sun's going to come up. Because there's no root, uh, whatever is produced isn't going to last. It's not going to really bear fruit. And that is someone who receives the word immediately uh, with joy. So this is someone we think is receiving the word and we're so blessed and we're responding. And Jesus tells us ahead of time, hey, there's going to be people that are going to quote unquote respond, but they're, they're stony ground hearers and they're not going to end up really producing. It's not going to work in their life as it were, not because the word of God is, is deficient. The seeds, not that there's something wrong with the seeds. It's the soil they're planted in. And then the third group is the, the group that's planted, but it's planted among uh, thorns. And the thorns spring up. So you've, you've got some root. It looks, again, it's very similar to the stony ground. You get people that respond to the word. They seem all enthusiastic. But then the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches come up like vines and thorns and choke whatever was produced. And then you have nothing. And so these three categories, there's four categories. Three of them are bummers. Three of them are, they're not getting anything. I mean, they may seem to get something, uh, but if you put your hope in the response of these people, the, uh, the wayside, the, the, the road receivers, the stony ground receivers, the thorny receivers. If you put your hope in these people, you're going to be disheartened. You're going to think that you have failed. Maybe you didn't present the gospel properly enough. Maybe you didn't minister the word. Maybe you didn't use the right scriptures. And your tendency is going to, to, going to think that I'm a failure. Jesus said this is what's going to happen. Uh, you and I have to realize that it's all about the heart. And of the four categories of people's hearts, three of them are not conducive to them responding to the word. I want you to keep that in mind. If you ever hear, well, you're going to hear it right now. When you hear Isaiah 55, 11 from God, it's, it's, he's speaking through the prophet. He gives an example of the rain that comes down and the, you know, that the precipitation comes and every time it comes, it accomplishes what God wants. It, it, you know, some rain falls on the, on the street, runs off, but, uh, you know, God uses the rain to bring forth produce. People survive because God rains on the just and on the unjust. And not every single place that it rains produces fruit or vegetables. You know, some of it just kind of seems to be wasted. But God says, just like that, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. That is God's guarantee that when you sow the seed, God is going to work one way or another. See, we tend to think that, in fact, so many have claimed that verse, God's word's not going to return void, and that it's always going to bring forth a convert, that somebody's going to believe every time they hear the word. Didn't happen with Jesus, <laughs> and he, he didn't use the wrong verse. He never said the wrong word. He never left a conversation like you and I do and said, ah, I should have said this. Oh, I should have said that. Oh, this would have been the perfect response. Jesus gave the perfect response every time. And yet, even he himself, not everybody believed the moment they heard Jesus. In fact, there were many people, John chapter 6, one example, uh, many walked, went back and walked no more with him. They were offended at the word. They were, you know, hard, um, rock-hard pavement hearers or stony ground hearers or thorny hearers. And Jesus had all that in his life. So we are too. 
So keep in mind, when God promises my word is going to accomplish what I want, some of it is simply as, as fair dinkum, as they say, warning. Let me give you an example. In the, in the scriptures, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, 30 times there is this phrase that God uses, that they shall know, or then they shall know, 30 times. 25 of those times is in the book of Ezekiel. And let's think about Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a preacher that God called ahead of time. He said, Ezekiel, I want you to go. I want you to preach to my people Israel. But I'm telling you ahead of time that this time, your, your ministry, I am sending you to a bunch of stiff-necked, hard-hearted people, and they're not going to listen to you. Can you imagine that calling from God? I want you to go and preach to these people, and they're never going to receive what you say. Talk, talk about encouragement. Uh, but you know what? God told Ezekiel that, and Ezekiel obeyed, knowing ahead of time that his message wasn't going to be received. Now, if you read Ezekiel, they actually, there were times where the people of Israel he was popular. They said, come, hear what the words of the Lord are. And, and you know, they, he was like unto them a very pleasant song, the Bible says. So, it, you know, outwardly, it didn't look like they were rejecting him. But, but God told Ezekiel, they're going to hear your words, but they're not going to do them. And then, and then here's what God told Ezekiel. And he would encourage us through this parable of Jesus in Matthew 13. He said, here's why I want you to preach to them. For two, that, that phrase, so that they will know. Number one, so they will know I am God. When you witness to someone and you share the gospel, they are free to reject it, and they may. But that doesn't mean that you wasted your time or you wasted the words, because they are now accountable with everything you, sh you shared with them. The second thing that God says to Ezekiel, if he doesn't say that they may know that I am the Lord, he'll say that they may know that a prophet was among them. In other words, judgment day comes, and the people here, and, and this is true in, in um, Luke 16 with the rich man and Lazarus, same thing. There's going to be people on judgment day that are going to want to point the finger at God or maybe someone that was a believer in their life, and they're going to say, you didn't give me a fair warning. You didn't tell me. And God's going to say, oh, no. And he's going to point back to Ezekiel. Remember what Ezekiel did? Or remember his preaching? They'll know then that a prophet was among them. Just like Abraham told uh, the rich man when he said, let someone come back from the dead and warn them. And Abraham said, no, they have the word of God. They have the seeds of the scriptures. If they're not going to, if they're not going to hear the seeds of the scriptures, they're not going to receive that. Their heart is so hardened. They're not going to be persuaded though one rose from the dead, that they may know that a prophet have been, have been among them, that they may know uh, fair warning. And so some of the purpose of seeds when we witness is it's not going to be a blessing all the time. People aren't going to get saved every minute. In fact, in Matthew 15, beginning of verse 12, Jesus is teaching he just got done teaching. And again, remember, Jesus, he never, ever said the wrong thing because he was God in the flesh. And it says that some of the, the disciples came back all concerned in Matthew 15 and verse 12. And they said, <laughs> I don't know what they were expecting. They said, Jesus, don't you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard that saying? <gasps> I can just imagine Jesus. He's like, and so, you know, they were all concerned. Just like sometimes we're a little too concerned about what people think instead of what our responsibility is to them. Folks, no matter what people, however people respond to the word, if God calls you to minister the word, minister the word. The rest is on them. Listen to what Jesus said. When his disciples were all concerned that they had offended the Pharisees by the word, his word, Jesus didn't say, oh no, what did I say? I'll go back and apologize. 
And he wasn't arrogant or bombastic. He said then he said to them very clearly, he said, but it says it says his response was, but he answered. In other words, he's not buying it. And he said, every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Next three words, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. That may sound hard, hard hearted, but it's not. He knew the Pharisees of all people, not all of them, thankfully Nicodemus and others, but the Pharisees had a, a large portion of pavement hearers. You know, they were like putting the, putting the seed right on the, right on the middle of the highway, the Apian way. Uh, there's, no, there's no root going to take there. And so Jesus said, you know what, just leave them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. So keep in mind that that's going to be the response. And that's, in fact, that's why Jesus said, uh, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. In other words, folks, there's going to be people, and it's not because the word of God is not powerful. They're just going to reject the word. Israel did it. Samuel took offense. And God told Samuel, they have not rejected you. They've rejected me. And so every stony ground hearer, Every highway pavement here, wayside, every thorny ground here that does not bring forth the fruit of the last soil is on them, not on you. If you have, if you've preached to them, as Paul said, you can, and as, as Ezekiel would say, I am, you know, I've, I'm, I'm the watchman, I gave warning, and now I can wash my hands. I am free from the blood of all men, Paul said after preaching in Ephesus uh, for weeks with, with tears. And so I want you to keep in mind, though, I had an incident happen the other day. Uh, as you know, this streaming thing on Facebook is, is a whole new experience. And when we stream a morning service message, it just stays on Facebook, which is really neat. Uh, for example, one message, the first message, I think there were like, by the end of that day, there were 500 people that saw that sermon. Now, again, most of them probably, most of them definitely didn't tune into the whole thing. But during that sermon that I preached and each streaming sermon, because it's still posted on Facebook, dozens and dozens of people will see it. And do see it. They come back and watch it. Some people come back and watch the whole thing. That is so awesome to us preachers. Do you know for centuries, uh, when a preacher would preach, unless it was recorded and then sold in tapes or something, you know, especially before that technology at all, we preach a message. It's done. We put it in the books and move on. Whatever happened, happened. Now we get to preach, and a message I preached years ago will be listened to this day, maybe, uh, and, and still bring forth fruit. How awesome is that? So on Facebook one day, uh, in fact, one, here's another blessing. The one sermon that I preached on the streaming service, it was called um, It Didn't Work, addressing those people who say, I tried Christianity and it didn't work. And that was just pretty much a gospel message. And we, I preached it. And, you know, at the end of the week, about 300 some people saw it. And this this thing flashed up on my Facebook feed that said, would you like more people to see this video? I'm a preacher. I preach the word. God uses his word. It has nothing to do with me. Yeah, I, I would. And so I, I looked at it. It said for ten dollars, you can boost this video. Ten bucks to broaden the audience of the Word of God, I'm in. So I clicked, paid for it, and so sure enough, the next week, the views of that video went from 300 to over 2,000, and now it's even climbing more. Now again, that doesn't mean 2,000 people sat and watched the whole thing, and some of them probably just clicked on, saw what it was, and clicked out. But 2,000! Versus 300. If you want to, if you want to plant a garden 
or you're a farmer and you only have 300 seeds versus 2,000 seeds, which one is going to produce more fruit? You know, you're going to, absolutely, that's fantastic. And some people even liked it. Uh, wow. <laughs> anyway, so I get up early the other morning and I look on the Facebook just to be encouraged. And some rascal, annoyed, posts something. I'm not going to mention the words he used, but he said, would Facebook stop putting this bleep? And he used a vulgar profanity word. And he said, would Facebook stop putting this stuff in my way or like in my feed? And, and he used a very vulgar curse word to talk about my preaching, about the word of God. And first, first I was hurt. Then I start getting mad. How dare this guy reject the word of God? That was the prophet in me coming out. And then I thought, wait a minute. I thought, you know what? And that's when I thought about this parable, the sower and the soil. And when Jesus shared it, he was not wanting us to focus on the wayside seed, the highway seed, the stuff that falls right on the pavement. He didn't want us to focus on the stony ground seed, you know, even though it's a blessing to see people respond, but it also reminds us that results are very uh, unsure because, you know, you, you start counting how many souls you led to Christ. I wonder how many stony ground hearers or thorny ground hearers where they're not in the category at the end that bring forth fruit. So in this parable, after Jesus shares about the three kinds of soil, the wayside, that's the, the pavement, the macadam, the street itself. Then there's the stony ground, has a little bit of earth, and then there's the thorny ground. Then he says this in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 8. He says, but this was his focus. This is where he wants to park. He doesn't want us thinking about, he wants us aware of the different responses that end up being fruitless. But this is where his focus is. But other fell on good, into, other fell into good ground. Hallelujah. And brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. So that's where the focus is, the good ground. Uh, Matthew, or Mark chapter 4 and verse 8, same story. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. Hallelujah. In fact, there's no mention of the different percentages there. Because that's not what we're supposed to think about. If you witness and share the gospel and you get a hundredfold response, someone else only gets 30, you're not better than them. Some of us in fundamental Baptist circles need to take heed to that. This is not a uh, who's more macho game, carnality and boasting numbers. But the focus is... The, the good soil. And Luke chapter 8, verse 8, and other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit. I'm convinced that that's where Jesus wants us to be focusing. Jesus wants us thinking about that. I remember uh, as a new believer, uh, one of my high school friends, George, played hockey together and he got saved shortly after high school. And and uh, he's a, a new Christian. I wasn't too, un, you know, too, I, I was new too, but a few years older in the Lord. And uh, he and I went out uh, visit, on visitation together. I was the leader. And this was George's first time. He was scared to death. And I will never forget it. I still remember where we were. And George and I knock on the door of this real rich community, real nice houses. And this is George's first experience. And we knock on the door, the person opens, and no sooner had we told them where we were from that we got the door slammed in our face. Stony ground here, maybe. 
uh, maybe someone that was just sick of Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, but, you know, God bless George that he to this day is serving the Lord. He did not quit. And, you know, because our job is to focus on the, the good fruit and others fell into good ground. Uh, you know, I, I find that it is very discouraging thinking about the, the naysayers, you know, the ones that are vulgar and uh, just have contempt for the scriptures. Uh, you know, they're not even stony ground here. They're, you know, pavement, rock hard pavement hearers. There is nothing. You, you might as well just crush that seed and ground it into the, the pavement because it's not going to bring forth anything. And it's easy to get discouraged by that. I find that the more I think about those kind of people, you know, the people that that just don't want anything to do, they have contempt, they're not receptive, they're, they're hard-hearted, they're not being fed by your preaching, they reject your preaching. Uh, maybe they'll, they'll say something like, well, you know, you have your religion, I have mine. Don't get discouraged by that. I find that when I think on that, and I know the devil wants us to, he wants us to dwell on the th things and the people that discourage us, the people that reject the word, the people that are not tender hearted, the good ground. I find when I think on them, and sadly I have, I lose my joy. No kidding. But you know what? The more I think about the tender-hearted, receptive people, the more I have joy. And the more I, I, I because that's the blessing. To, you know, we, we minister to people that receive the word. And, uh, you know, Paul said, or Peter said, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. People have a, a challenge to desire the word. James 1.21, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Our challenge, folks, is to have tender hearts. I want to close with a story about that. Uh, early on in my Christian walk, uh, going to our home church where we got fed sumptuously from the word of God, just from our pastor, every single week and as often happens uh churches just we take people for granted and an evangelist comes in and it's as if to the congregation we it's like we'd never heard any good preaching before this kind of dawned on me after a while but there was a preacher that just a powerful preacher of god that god used in a mighty way even as God used our pastor. And uh, this evangelist, still a phenomenal preacher, Tom Farrell, maybe some of you have heard of him. In fact, pray for Tom Farrell. He's struggling with, uh, with brain cancer. Uh, and I have seen, there's actually websites, blogs or whatever, of, I've, I've seen nasty responses from people that probably sat under the same preaching when I sat under his ministry. And I, I read this stuff and I think, did you hear the same preacher I heard? Same with my pastor. There'd be people that would respond, and I'm like, wait a minute. I sat under his ministry for five, maybe six years, and I grew, and I thrived under the feeding of the word, and you're saying you sat there and you didn't get fed? It's not all about the preacher. And a dear friend of mine, Tim Harvey, just recently went to be with the Lord, a deacon in his church, serving faithfully. We went to Bible school together. But back in those times, he sat under the ministry of Tom Farrell. And he shared with me not too long ago, he said, Steve, you know, I remember those days, and you guys all made a big deal about Tom Farrell. And he said, I didn't get it. I didn't see it. And then he shared with me, and now Tim was walking with the Lord, really just on fire for God. And he said, but you know what I was? My heart was, wasn't right with the Lord. And to just see Tim say that, and I just remember that with fondness, and I've drawn upon, drawn upon that in times uh, when I've needed to hear that, that you know what, it's not always the preacher. In fact, even when you and I bungle, and, and we do bungle, we're preachers, you know, we're, we're frail, we're human, we say the wrong words, we use the wrong scripture, we 
me misquote scripture or take people to the wrong scripture, to the wrong hymn book when you're supposed to be going to the scripture. And what's the Bible say? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I hang my hat on that verse. Praise God. Uh, but I think of that. You know, it's not about us. It's about God's word. That's what he uses. So if you have a speech impediment or you don't know the scriptures that well, or you quote two and, and pretend and act like they're one because you don't know, but you share your heart and you try to witness and every time people just reject it, take heart. It's not about us. It's about the word. And don't forget that simple statement, but other fell on good ground. That's our goal. That we would, Jesus said, I've ordained you that you should bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. You can't bring fruit unless you're scattering seed. So scatter the seed faithfully.